Welcome back Elden Ring fans to another video. Shadows of the Ear Tree is a much awaited DLC that everybody has been looking out for for right now but with no news from FromSoft directly but with a couple of hints here and there from other sources. Now we can use this time that we've been waiting for so long to get us better prepared for Elden Ring's DLC. Now, when I used to play the older games and I had gone through the DLC when it had just launched, I had found myself not able to use a lot of the weapons, at least that weren't for my build. But with today's build, the Fundamentalist build, we can actually use pretty much anything. Um, we have a lot of options when it comes down to intelligence and faith, and we're very split on it, and we have high enough dex and strength to use about 90% of the weapons in the game. That's about 300 weapons in total. At level 150, that's pretty damn wild. So the question comes to how are we able to do all of this at 150? Normally, if you did this build, you have something detrimenting your entire build. You know, you're low on defense, you have low stats. Well, we all come down to the 48 Vigor and the Crimson Amber Medallion. What do I mean? Well, the Crimson Amber Medallion around level 50 in Vigor gives you a percentile bonus to around 10 levels. That's 10 free levels. So what I did was I gave myself around 50 vigor and I went ahead and gave those 10 levels up from my vigor that was originally 60 into my intelligence and faith. And that allowed me to have 33 intelligence and 42 faith because I had actually mapped out my, uh, my build correctly. And you can go ahead and go back to it and look at it and you'll understand what I mean. Now I do have the intelligence ring on and that's only required for really one to two things in the entire build. I think it's believed for Night Comet and I can also use the Moonlight Greatsword, which is one of my favorites. Um, so I have no detriment to faith at all. I have 42 faith naturally and I have 33 naturally. Now, you yes, you have to use some talismans, but you will always have that free slot if you don't wear the Stargazer's Heirloom for that five extra intelligence. Now, this build has so much variety. My defense is still around 30, so I'm still not, like my absorption for my armor is still around 30. My defense is around, um, uh, in, it's definitely around 150. It's pretty wild. I'm doing really good damage. This is new game plus five. Um, and you're going to see me just go through a boss like nothing. Um, you'll see all the variety we can use. We'll have Radigan's Rings of Light. Um, and we can basically use anything that has to do with intelligence and faith. Uh, we have 31 strength and 22 decks so that we can wield, you know, big ultra great swords. We can two hand if we need to for anything that's above 40. And um, we can also use 22 decks, which allows us to use all the smaller dex weapons. Um, yeah, you're not going to be using, uh, of course, like Melania's hand or Melania's prosthesis, but you're going to be able to use a lot more than that. It's a very big surprise on how versatile this build is. I mean, we have split damage types between magic and faith. Um, magic is really good for most of the PvE, and faith is really good for healing you. Um, so you have sacred, you have fire art, you can use a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. This, this build's pretty fucking wild. I mean, look at, look at the amount of weapons right there that you need for one whole build. Most people are making just one build for it. So we have basic stat requirements and are doing pretty insane damage. Of course we have, you know, moon veil that we can use now, but we can also use, um, you know, sacred weapons. We can use obviously the big one, the sword of night and flame. Um, which, I mean, I don't really use it very often, but it's still something we can use. And we can get it up to 800 damage because we can buff ourselves. I use uh, the Erd Tree's heal. I use Golden Vow. I can use Flame Grant Me Strength, which will increase my damage with fire art weapons. Um, and I can pretty much stack myself to a, be a fucking monster. I mean, you can get Blasphemous Blade to do like 1100, but you can also get freaking the sword of night and flame to do almost 900 to 10 to a thousand um and that's very wild for a straight sword so as you're gonna see we're gonna go ahead and um, show off some of this damage um like i said this is around new game plus five and this is margit and he just gets decimated i mean he doesn't really get to hit me but once i believe and the damage that we do is just wild um it, you can do basically everything with this build. So when the DLC, Shadows of the Earth Tree, finally comes out, you may be able to use new spells and incantations, not just faith and intelligence, but fundamentalist ones. So when you find a weapon in the DLC that you want to use, you'll be able to pick it up and just go ahead and use it. You can give it a spin. And sure, maybe you'll find one that has 
more requirements than 33 intelligence or maybe more than 42 faith. So there you go. Just go ahead and take away the uh, Great Jars Arsenal because the only reason why I'm wearing it is because I like to dual-wield Ultra sometimes. Um, but you can go ahead and take that off, and you'll have two free talisman slots, and the Crimson Amber Medallion is giving the 10 free levels, and say you don't like intelligence or you don't like faith, you can just sacrifice one or the other and put it into arcane. Maybe there's a new arcane weapon that comes out, or maybe there's a new strength weapon that you want to go ahead and split damage with. This just gives you more chance to do it, but I wanted to show off the faith and intelligence version so that you can use fundamentalist spells and fundamentalist weapons when they come out. Um, you know, there may be new weapons like the Clayman's Harpoon, which scales with intelligence, but is infusible, so you can give it a sacred infusement, and it'll still scale with intelligence and your faith, and you'll get stupid high numbers. I can make it do as much as the Great Lance. You can full heal with this build. There's a lot of uniqueness you can have, and there's going to be a lot more spells and weapons that may take advantage of this, and I just wanted to show off the build. That will give you a little bit more variety and help you out in the DLC, so I'll see you guys later and peace out have a good one